This episode of the Wholesale Hackers Live Q&A is brought to you by DealBell.io. Get the unfair advantage you never knew existed. DealBell gives you all the tools you need, including their innovative skip stack technology, so you can effortlessly identify the hottest off-market properties and win more deals faster. For more information and a free 14-day trial, go to www.dealbell.io. Deal Bell. Win the deal and ring the bell. What's up, what's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Um, Glad to be back for the live Q&A here in 2022. This is our first one uh, since the new year, so happy to be here. For those of you that are new, uh, this is a QA. and a so this is an hour uh, that we give of our time, myself and Joyer, who's about to, about to pop him in here in just a second. This is an hour of our time that we give to you guys for free to get all of your questions answered um, here in the live Q&A, whether it's working a deal, whether it's basic question, there's no question that's uh, uh, that will go without answering. So just let us know what you got. I got to add my good friend, uh, Jory here, and I got to give man? you a little bit of, I got to, got to give you a little, uh, beef here because I know it's a new year, but <laughs> what? it's also, it's also a new year that the sec is also another national championship. I know all that hate in your heart. You got to let it out. For those of you who don't know, Jory's a, a big 10 Michigan football fanatic. He's he's been that way for years. Lord the rest of his soul. Like he'll be okay. Um, been through all this the heartache like, and the and the pain and the suffering of just not having it. And I get it. I've been there. I'm a Mississippi State Bulldog fan. I get. I know what it's like <laughs> not to have a championship okay. for a thank long you, time. But my team did win one in my favorite sport last year, so I'm I'm all right. I'm good. I'm sitting good. It's about baseball. Yeah, baseball. The best the okay. best game there is. I mean, so do you claim when Georgia wins, is that like you get a piece of that or something? Like is there a share is a profit sharing in the SEC for everybody who gets a national championship? hundred because... uh-huh. <laughs> percent. No. If Ohio State wins a national championship, I'm not gonna be happy about it. Like there's it's like Michigan <laughs> or, or no one else, right? So, you know, you can't be a I... Mississippi State Bulldog fan and be happy because Alabama keeps winning championships every year. You know? Hey, they didn't win it this year. Or Convincingly, hey, lost. We, we, lost, we lost. We lost. We lost to the champ. Though. I can't be mad. I'm a Michigan fan. I'm proud of Harbaugh, right? I mean, I wasn't a virgin being done with Michigan last year. They came back. They made it to the playoff game. They didn't have the outing I was I was hoping for, you know. But we made it to the playoffs. I can't complain about that, right? I mean, that's that's a big turnaround. And we'll be back next year. You know, we'll be back next year, right? So, I mean, those bags yeah. of money just a little bit bigger down there in SEC. What can I say? You know? I mean, what's going to happen is when they expand when they expand the playoffs to say six or eight teams, whatever they come up with, you're just going to end up having like four teams that from the SEC that are playing for it all. That now that's the myth. The SEC is not a good conference. They have two to three good teams. The rest of that conference is not that good. That that's a. I hope they expand it because if you guys would actually play someone outside of your conference, <laughs> right? What do you mean? We just played. Some, we just, the elements. SEC just you played. played just, SEC just played the bet. The top four, supposedly the top four. Well, no, I'm saying you guys get you guys have a good two and three, but as a whole, that con. I mean, come on, I, we can play Kentucky in our sleep, right? Please give, please, please give us Tennessee. I'd like to see that you know? game. You say that, but I was at I was in I was at the Gator Bowl. Now, granted, I know you know the transfer portal wasn't around back then, but. Um, I know all the players, you know, that they sit out because they're going to the draft and all that other stuff. But I want to say it was like fifty-two to fourteen, Mississippi State beat Michigan. Yeah, no, we no one played. It's embarrassing. Game. No one, no, none of our team played that game. I, I know what game you're talking about. Like <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even go. To I was, I was there, and all I had heard the whole time was like, "Y'all got bells, we got rings." I was like, "Well, you're not playing for a ring today." I'll simmer down. Yes. Congrats to Georgia. Congrats to the mighty, mighty SEC. Once again, <laughs> congrats. Yeah, and, you know. <laughs> but, hey, go blue. Go blue always. <clears throat> you know, there's always hockey. No, I don't know. No. In the Big no. Ten. <laughs> we got basketball, too. We're good. Yeah, the, you do okay. Yeah, the Speaking of basketball, good. I mean, I don't know. The SEC does, holds their own there as well. 
uh, baseball hold their own there as well. Women's basketball hold their own there as well. Gymnastics, track and field. I know, I know. You can keep going SEC. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kenneth. Okay, Michigan won a national championship in 1997. All right. I don't want to hear this consensus stuff. We won a national championship in 1997. All right. So that's enough of football talk. I, I've been holding on to this because <laughs> Jory has been refusing to talk to me about football. So I figured I would just pressure him. <laughs> Forcing him in. No, I wasn't. I was under the weather, Brent, and you were harassing me. Like I, I didn't actually appreciate that. I wasn't feeling that well, and you harassing me with your SEC chants. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was just, I was just happy it wasn't Alabama again. I, I felt like watching, <laughs> watching the season play out. That Georgia was really the only team that had a shot at just truly running the field. But I think they just kind of rested on their laurels a little bit in that SEC game. Um. Yeah, because that my defense. Boy said, my boy, my boy, my boy said that that was on plan. He said that Georgia purposely lost that game so they could have the rematch in that championship game, and it would be an all SEC affair. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any coach that would walk into a game and purposely lose it. No, I don't either. But I mean, that's you know, that's that's what I heard from the SEC chair. You know, chair people that that was the that was the plan. Go out there and take one for the conference. <laughs> hey, if anybody should be mad at anybody, if any other conference should be mad at anybody, they should all be mad at Auburn for not finishing the deal and keeping Alabama out of it. Agree. Totally agree. Anyways, that's enough about football and sports and all that jazz. We're here to talk about real estate. Um, what's been good with you, man? It's been a while since we've done one of these. I know we took the last two weeks off. You had uh, the had the bug. And been overcoming that, and the yeah, week before man, that, I had the bug. So it's just been, it's been crazy. Yeah, no, yeah, we we both were kind of under the weather for a few weeks, so it's, it's good to be back, man. And uh, just starting stuff off, man. You know, kind of picking up where we left off last year, right? I mean, we're looking at having a good month in January. I'm actually selling a few notes, um, you know, which is which is really good when you. The good thing about doing real estate notes, right? Because you know, when I create a note. You always get some surprises, right? We had a note that got paid off early that closed on Monday. So, I mean, that was a nice cash and flunks. We got another note that's getting paid off early next week. And they were actually selling seven notes to a note buyer. Right? So these are notes that we originated over the last two years. We have a note buyer who's buying seven of them. Um, so that's always another source of income that people don't think about. When you create a note, you can always go out there and sell that note, you know, whenever you want. And it's pretty liquid. It's pretty easy to sell a note. You know, to, to the secondary market right now, so that's always good to have out there. Um, probably a lot easier than selling a house. You know, it's a lot easier to sell a note than it is to sell a real to sell a rental property. You know, because there's a lot more people looking to say, "Hey, I can buy this note for this amount." You know, you discount a little bit, you sell it. You always do that, but there's a lot more people who are, who are willing to buy a note than just to buy a single family house with a tenant already in place. It's two different things. You know, so we're doing a few note sales. We're looking to add some uh, some mobile homes to our mobile home park. You know, that's going to be a, a big project that we're taking on this year is trying to bring that thing up from, you know, right now we got 18 of the 51 pads full. So, you know, our goal year one is to try to add 10, 10 to 15 more homes in there. Some out there sourcing, looking for mobile homes. If, if anyone knows of any mobile homes for sale in the Pennsylvania area, please shoot them my way because we're looking to buy some, uh, fill up that park. And uh, we're also negotiating on a, on a, on a block. Find five five homes on one city block, kind of in a row, and you know we might rehab some of those. We might actually tear two down and do a new build. So we're doing that. That's what's going on right now. And then we're just trying to you know we're we're trying to stay focused too, man, because you know last year we kind of ended the year with a lot of fires going on, a lot of different stuff. We're trying to always stick to what we do, which is you know basically affordable housing. We're trying to stick to you know real estate notes, mobile home parks, affordable housing. Um, just kind of stick to what we do best. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, our year's going too many. I got too many. Re, I had too many rehabs going on in the year, and, it, and like it just, I don't like the rehabs. You know, I got a house you, that I'm flipping right yeah, now. That I'm the market. I know you don't like the <laughs> rehab. I hate them. So we're trying to stay away from those rehabs. So we had one close um, this past Thursday. It was a good little deal. Um, we made twenty on it as a wholesale. Um, we got one tentatively scheduled to close on Friday. We're working, ironing out the details on it. It's going to be a doozy. I'll let you guys know how that one goes, but it should be a six figure deal when it's all said and done. And for those of you who don't know, like my focus this year, like I'm going to take what comes to me. I'm focusing on inbound marketing methods. So I'm looking at PPC, Facebook, some bandit signs, 
uh, stuff like that to try to you know get more people calling in or filling out our forms. So that's kind of my goal. So I'm going to take what comes out of those and obviously, you know, wholesale or pick up a few for rentals or some flips here and there. But my core focus, as far as outbound goes, is I'm looking for large, you know, package deals, multifamily deals, mobile home parks, RV parks, uh, large tracts of land, uh, just some bigger deals. So I'm going whale hunting and hoping that I, you know, I can swing five or six, you know, big six figure plus deals this year. Um, goal eventually i think one of the goals i'd love to do like a million dollar deal eventually um because i know it's possible down here with the amount of land and the amount of uh development that's going on in the area i feel like i can i can get in and, and uh find some land subdivide it sell it off to a developer make make a chunk of change yeah no we're, i mean that one deal i'm talking about right now we're, we're buying we're buying six homes between two sellers but they're all six in a row at the end of the day, I think, you know, our total purchase price, and that's about 1.2. And then we'll probably have to put another four to five into it, you know. But um, when it's all said and done, it's on a premier, you know, block in the city. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a bigger project than we've done before. And it'll probably take us the whole year, you know, just to kind of do that one out. So that's why doing that project right there, you know, that'll take a lot of, a lot of bandwidth while we're just doing, you know, what we like to do and all this stuff. Yeah. And, oh, I forgot. It's I got another flip. I got another flip that I've, I'm uh, starting that's closed closed last week um, in Mississippi. So it's nice. nice. 200, 200 to 210. I got it for 96.5. So I'm probably going to be about 25 in it on flipping it. So be around 130, 140 all in. Sell it for 210, hopefully. It's on two acres. Nice four bed, two bath. So it's a little funky um the layout's a little funky they did some weird things in there like people that previously owned it were trying to change the layout and i, I don't understand what they were thinking on some of the stuff but it's all right we're gonna go back and fix some of that stuff <laughs> here we go we got a what's question up, what's, up? what's up robert and who else said how kenneth is here one 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 wait so Katie says, new to wholesaling, using books, podcasts, and studying for my license while going while working in medicine. What three things should I start getting stuff aligned for my first deal? There's so much info. It's a good first question. Of all, I like congrats this. on working in medicine and you know pursuing your dream of real estate at the same time. So congrats on that. <clears throat> and you're uh, starting at the right place. I mean, it's funny because when, when you see books, when I got into real estate in 07, there was no YouTube university yet. <laughs> there was no podcast yet. I, about, I read probably 50 books <laughs> in two years. You know, I, I would go to the library, just take books out, read books. My wife found a notebook a few months ago with just notes in it. This is from like 2006. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I should turn into NFT. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, let's say, I mean, I mean, we can kind of go over, you know, getting your first deal. We got a challenge coming up soon, too. That's going to be all about getting your first deal. So this is a good question. <clears throat> but, um, you know, what do you say, Brent? I know you got some good some good tips on just going out there with some kind of action steps to get your first deal. Well, there's really only two things you need to focus on. There's, I know this is going to sound, you know, rudimentary here, but, you know, finding people to talk to and talking to those people, right? Uh, the first three things I always suggest everyone does is number one, make sure everyone in your circle knows who you are, what you do and how you can help them. Even if you've never done a deal before, right? Just make a post on your Facebook saying, Hey, everyone's like, I'm looking to get started. I'm looking to get uh, started flipping houses here in the low, in the area, kind of like on HGTV. I'm not sure I can do it in 30 minutes or not, but I got, you know, I won't let everyone know that I'm looking for these types of houses. And you can maybe take a picture of a couple of abandoned houses or vacant houses in your neighborhood and post those is like, you know, so people understand what you're looking for. Number two is the other thing that I tell everybody to start doing, take a couple hours every week and go find 25 driving for dollars properties, right? Find 25 driving for dollars properties every single week. Then you can go to deal bell and skip trace them, or you can go use a free fast people search or true people search, whatever your budget is. Um, look up their phone numbers contact the owners and ask if they want to sell. And there's really only four things that I try to get out of my first conversation with somebody. What's the price? What's the condition? 
what's the time frame you're looking to sell and what's your reason for selling right and that last one is probably the biggest one is whether or not you're going to really know if you've got somebody that's willing to will and deal you're going to talk to a lot of people was like yeah i'm willing to sell what's your offer and I, my answer and my response is usually like well i don't really know without having to look at it it's like if you're interested in selling it i'd much rather see if i can meet your price versus us going back and forth and, and negotiating and, and neither one of us feeling good about a deal either anyway so if i can make your number work great if i can't i'll let you know why all right so Definitely. you got you got your circle of influence letting people know what it is you're looking to accomplish like that's very important don't feel like um, you're too new here because it's very important because your friends and your network want to see you succeed. They want to help you. If they don't, then they shouldn't be on your friends list anyways. Um, so they will respond, let them know what you're looking to do and then find those 25 driving for dollars properties every week. That's a hundred leads a month. Guaranteed there's a deal in there. If you can know how to run your numbers and talk to sellers, right? And talking to sellers is all about building rapport. It's more important to talk to the seller about them then it has anything to do with the house. When I walk into a house, I don't give a, I don't care about the sticks, the bricks, the dirt, any of that stuff. I want to focus on what it is they're trying to accomplish and what there is. Why am I here? Why did you not just call a realtor to list this thing? Right. I want to figure out why, why am I here? How can I help you? What is it you're trying to accomplish? And let's see if we can make this make sense. And, and go, find, I mean, one thing about go ahead. That. One thing I always say is go out there and find some buyers, right? So when you're, when you're talking to people, let them know what you're trying to do, you know, and looking for your driver darlings, look, talk to some actual buyers in rubber market and see what they're looking to buy. Because the easiest way to get your first deal is to know what people are looking for, you know? Um, you know, talk to some investors, go to some local meetups, right? Go into some local Facebook groups, see what buyers are out there, find out what they want. Then you have, I mean, because when you're first starting off, it's like, oh, where do I look for a deal? Or what, what even is a deal, right? You don't know what a deal is yet, right? So talk to people who are buying deals, you know, see what they're buying, and then bring them stuff. Just keep bringing them stuff, you know? Just like you would be, yeah. like, you know, like you were a risk agent. Go out there and find stuff, bring it to them. You know? Talk to all the wholesalers. You know, right now, a lot of, you know, talking to other wholesalers is easy to deal because, you know, a lot there's a lot of virtual wholesalers now who are just blasting stuff out there and running your market. So... You know, go out there and find the buyers, see what the buyers are finding, and then try to bring those buyers a deal. I mean, take orders, right? I mean, that's what you're doing. You're just taking orders. You go find out what that investor wants, right? So one of the things I did that I felt like helped me out a lot when I was in South Carolina, this is specific to South Carolina, but they only had foreclosure auctions once a month. And at once a month, there might be, you know, 30, 40, 50 properties. It just really depends that are going up for foreclosure auction. Well, I would go to those events and not expecting to bid on anything, but all I did was watched around the room and see who was bidding, how much they were bidding. And I just kind of kept up with what properties were what took notes. And at the end of it all, I would get up and I would go shake their hands and talk to them and say, I know she bought this. Are you buying more in the area? Are you looking to buy more in the area? What are you looking for? What, what typical kinds of houses are you buying or what's your ideal house? Is it a brick on slab? Is it a three, two? Are you holding this for rentals? Are you, are you flipping them? What are, you know, what's your objective here? What are you trying to accomplish? And then let me see if I can go figure out what zip codes are you buying in? That can be important as well. There may be some investors who are like, I don't buy in that these zip codes. I only focus on this one. Um, I found out there was a buyer in Columbia that would pay 90% of the ARV, 90, 95% of the ARV. If it was in a certain zip code at, neighborhood and there was room to improve because he knew that he could build for 100 105 a foot and it was selling for 205 a foot right so if he could add a bedroom or a bathroom or whatever and there was room on the property to do that he would pay full price for him because he could make money on the on the additions on the value add so. yeah definitely so Go out there, yeah. Definitely go out there and find some buyers. I mean, one thing about buyers are buyers aren't loyal to one, to one agent or one wholesaler, right? Sellers are. You can have a seller who flips, you know, five homes a month and only uses one listing agent, but he'll buy a house from anybody, right? Um, buyers work with anyone who brings a deal, you know. So the easiest way to get a deal is to go find a deal for some buyers, you know. So that's what I would try to start off with there. 
Uh, she said, also, any upcoming seminars or how does one get involved with Wholesale Hackers? We'll travel. So we don't have any seminars <laughs> planned specifically for us. We do have a, a challenge, your first or next deal challenge that we're working on. I need Jory and, and Brian to get me their bio so I can finish the website. Um, but we should be starting that up here towards the end of the month. That would be a great way to get involved. Tuning in these Q&As every single week, also a great way to stay involved. Posting your questions inside of this group. This community wants to help. Uh, we want to be a, a sounding board and your accountability partner as you grow your business. Everything that I tell everybody this the call about our mentorship, mastermind, whatever you want to call it. Because I tell everybody this every single time I jump on a phone call with them that are interested in joining. I was like, I give away. I know you do as well. It's like we give away everything that we do in our business for free. There's no, and there's no secrets out there. Anybody that tells you there's, you know, they got some kind of secret on how they can get more deals and this and that just run because there's no such thing <laughs> as secrets in this business. Every, all the information's out there for free, right? So there's no reason why I should, shouldn't or wouldn't be sharing it out there for free. Um, it's the reason I put these content, put out content. It's the reason we do these Q and A's because I want to be a completely open book. The difference in joining what we're, what we're a part of is that it's a group of people who are actively uh, doing good, doing good business with, with good people and who want to help. And then you've got people who are doing multifamily. You got people who are doing virtual. You got people who are attorneys. You got people who are, uh, you know, big time wholesalers. You got people who are doing buy and hold in that group. Everybody in that group is, is there to want to, is there and wants to be able to help all the other members in there but it's not a group for somebody who's just getting started and haven't, hasn't done their first deal. I know that's something that you and I have been talking about doing is trying to put something together. That's kind of more for beginners um, who haven't done a deal yet. So that's one of the things that we're focused on trying to get done this year. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a great group of people. It's a community that we built. We meet twice a year. We meet every single week online. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity to learn, to grow your business. We've got several, people who are doing six figures a month in that group who, when they came to us, they had never done a deal. Uh, but now that we've kind of upped our prices and kind of done in per doing in-person meetings and moved it to more of a mastermind setting, um, we're trying to keep it to people who don't slow down the room. If I, if I can, if that's the right way to say that or not, I'm not sure. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, there's that they are going to be doing some in-person events. I know we're doing one here in orange beach, one in, uh, uh puerto rico the next year or this year i should say i've been saying next year for so long um we'll be doing this year but that's only for our mastermind people so but i will let you know what events that we do go to <clears throat> yeah, get you, get you. is your cousin on here brent i see pete moreno <laughs> i know he uh we're, we're not i mean i don't think we're cousins but uh we could be you know long way down Guys, the line Get your questions in, guys. So we, you know, that's what we do this every Wednesday for is to answer your questions. So, you know, we're not just here to talk about our business. We want to help you with uh with your business, you know. Um one thing we can talk about, Brent, while we get some questions is is, you know, we all saw the people scrambling like crazy over that new prop stream announcement about the uh yes, the I'm glad you brought that up. No, I already forgot data. about it. <laughs> you know. I'm glad I mean, you brought that up. Crazy. People were scrambling, you know, and just so you guys know, I mean, I just ran some comps this morning on Zillow. So, so Zillow still definitely has third party sold comps and it is free, you know, but um, yeah, if people don't know, kind of fill them in, Brandon, what, what that, what that was. Yeah. So prop stream and several third party data providers lost their MLS access. And I, from my understanding, it had everything to do with the national association of realtors, NAR lobbying to basically make that information a little bit more private. I don't know why. Uh, I, I do know why, but um, it's, it's to basically try to affect the, the wholesale market. I mean, I well, like but. Yeah, NAR, just so everybody knows about NAR, NAR is the National Association of Realtors. People don't realize this. It's the largest lobbyist group in America. Like it's bigger than NRA, it's bigger than all, you know, to back all these other groups. NAR is the largest, right? It has the more, I don't know if it has the most, but it's the biggest one out there. So. NAR has a lot of money that's put towards legislation, you know, and so of course, realtors, the majority of them still don't understand whole, they don't understand anything outside of what they do, you know, so to them, it's a NAR, you know, wholesalers are cutting into their business. So they're pushing, there's a huge campaign to basically illegitimize wholesaling, right? I mean, they want to make it seem like, you know, wholesalers are predatory, 
wholesalers are, you know, unethical, you know, we're saying, I'm not saying that there aren't some that are, but there are also realtors that are unethical too, right? So NARA definitely is out there pushing to kind of end wholesaling. And so, you know, I think the first thing they're doing is saying, hey, all these other sources are, are, are given data, right? That used to be only shared between uh, NARA members, right? So just so you know, before realtors going to comp properties, right? I mean, just five years ago, if you wanted to get comps, you had to order a BPO or have a realtor pool comps for you. You couldn't go on even a Zillow and pool comps. It wasn't out there, right? There was no way to do it. So, you know, they're just trying to basically protect their market share because I'm sure they're seeing, you know, a hit to... Did we lose you, Jory? I think we might have lost Jory. But anyways, to keep going on the topic of prop stream, and, and somebody did mention this, I understand that batch lead still has access and continue to have sold MLS. They may, I don't know. I don't use them. Um, but coming from a non-disclosure state like Mississippi, so I never prop stream, never worked there anyways for comps because they didn't have access to non-disclosure state. So that not having access to comps never hurt me. Now me currently where I'm at, I have my realtor's license. I just got it last year. So that's one of the big reasons why I got it is because I can have access to the MLS. Um, even though I could have got access through another realtor, but I just wanted to go ahead and get it just in case regulations happen, just in case, um, laws were passed. Right. So now I'm covered. Right. And I have my license. So if I was in Illinois, like a lot of people that the wholesaling laws that have passed, they were affected by that. Most people that continue to do business just went and got their license. And that may be what has to happen moving down the, uh, looking forward to in the future here. I don't know that for a fact, but I do feel like at some point in time, it's probably going to be more regulated in some way and you may have to get a license. So why not just go ahead and get it? So that's what I went ahead and did. And it can only, hurt, it can only help me. There's Jory popping back on. There he is. Um, so yeah, being a realtor does not hurt you whatsoever. All you have to do is disclose, disclose, disclose. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just going through prop stream. I was like, I lived in Mississippi the last three years. Prop stream didn't work there anyways, because it's a non-disclosure state. So we didn't have MLS data in Mississippi. So I just watched the market. Like I watched what things went up for sale for and mm -hmm. I paid attention to things. And once you know, like what certain neighbor neighborhoods are going for price per square foot, especially if it's like a subdivision, all those houses were built during the same time period. They're all around the same size for the most part. Um, they're all around the same age. So if you see what one sells for, just look at the condition of it and say, okay, well, I know what things are selling for in this neighborhood. Have a, have a yeah. really, have a much better idea versus, you know, just taking a stab at it or going with his estimate. Yeah, I mean, and I would never use this estimate, you know, but if people don't understand, you can go on to Zillow for free and pool comps. You know, I think we've talked about it before. I mean, you can go on to Zillow and pool comps by making a diagram of a neighborhood. I mean, it's, it's to me, it's the best free comp site out there right now, you know. And the, though this estimate is not accurate, you know, the sold data is accurate, right? I mean, when you, you pull it up. I think what happened though, a lot of people were using these other systems and like generating these predetermined, you know, CMAs, right? Like if you go on bat, I have batch, you can do it on batch, but batch can kind of pull it for you. I've never done that. If I'm going to pull comps, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to pick my own comps and I'm going to make sure that I, you know, map out the area where I'm looking at and I'm going to calculate it myself. We have to make sure that we do it that way. If you're using these systems to pull comps and they give you a, a spit out number, you know, that's why some of these ARVs we see are kind of out of this world, you know? So, you know, the prop stream thing is not a big, I mean, speaking of Zillow, they're calling me right now. <laughs> <laughs> the prop stream thing is not a big deal. Or, you know, I don't know whatever site, other sites, you know, can pull comps. Now you can still pull on Zillow. Um, you know, so as long as that's there, you know, go ahead and do that. And people have said Zillow, NAR sold information to Zillow. So I, mean, I don't think they're going to pull it from Zillow because that's how Zillow got the information. NAR sold information to Zillow to allow them to do that. Also, realtor.com, you can still go on realtor.com and pull comps too. You know, so those are two free sites that you can pull comps from whenever you want. Um, you know, outside of that, like you said, in some states you can't do it on there anyway because of the non-disclosure. And it's, there's nothing wrong with becoming cool with a realtor. I mean, realtors do a lot of stuff for free because they work by commission. They don't work by hourly wage, right? So if you're doing business and a realtor knows you're doing, and you're bringing them business, they will gladly pull comps for you because you're bringing them business. That's part of their job. 
Well, and just find a way to add value, right? I mean, that's like, don't, don't just use them. Don't, don't, that should not be your first question. No, bring like, them hey, business. You. Yes. So, yeah, bring them business. Hey, you know, I'm not working with anyone. I'm looking, you know, if, if I come across a lead that's retail that I can't list, obviously, cause I'm not a realtor, but if I come across somebody, do you mind if I refer you for them to you? Right. They're going to, Oh yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah, please do. <laughs> Great. Well, yeah. whenever I ever have a question on what something, uh, so now I got them all agreeable and they're, you know, they said, yes, that please send the list of leads to me. Then I'm going to ask them, I was like, well, if I ever need like a CMA or something like that done, like is that something you'd be willing to do for me if I'm sending you leads in reverse, they're not going to say no, because you just offered them something to value. Now you exactly. have opportunity to re repay that. So yeah, reciprocation, right? You know, they give you something, you give them something too. So you know, reciprocity. Um, being a realtor, can you still wholesale? One hundred percent. Jory, you've been a realtor for how long? Since two thousand seven. I don't know how long it is, but <laughs> since two thousand seven, what's that? Fourteen years. <laughs> yeah, that's fourteen years. <laughs> I'm still recovering, but yeah, you can definitely be a realtor and wholesale. Now, your brokerage might be anti wholesaling, so make yes. sure you pick the right brokerage. Right? People understand when you're a realtor. What you can and can't do is up to your broker. You know, I mean, I, when I came in real estate, I had a very, very investor friendly broker. So I could do pretty much anything that involved with investments. Some brokerages, like, you know, some of the big box ones, especially, they're so cookie cutter retail real estate that a lot of things that like I was doing, right? They had no clue about it. They would call the MLS on the board on me, you know, all kinds of stuff because they just didn't know what I was doing, you know? Um, so yeah, just make sure when you pick your brokerage that your broker understands what wholesaling is and then they're, they're fine with it. Yeah. And, and if you need uh, advice on a brokerage that EXP is a, a good way to go. So hit me up. If you want some information on that, just drop me a message in my Facebook and I'll be happy to discuss why I went with them and why I feel like you'd be a good fit there as well. Uh, in this business, cause I don't really have a boss per se or an office I have to go to, or these mandatory meetings and, um, yeah. I don't have to worry about anybody breathing down my, you know, my neck, always watching every move that I'm doing because I only have like two state brokers. Uh, there's one in the North and one in the South and heck to be honest with you, the only time I ever see or hear from him is at like a, a networking event. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you want it. <laughs> yeah. That's Absolutely. a good question. Though. This question by Pete. So if I get my yeah, so if I get my license and pay dues, can I use the MLS without being in the office and use it when I need it? Yes, you can, I can. I can access the MLS from anywhere in the world. Yep. Yeah, as long as you're the key to that, as long like you said pay dues. So as long as you're a member of a brokerage that is a member of the local association. Okay. So yeah. here's the thing: if you're in, let's say, Florida, and your brokerage, there might I think there's like 15 different local associations in florida right so if you're in miami and you're getting miami broward west palm beach you get that on one mls right if you want to get the tampa area you have to join the tampa association and pay dues in tampa to get their mls so that's what you have to realize you don't get mls for the whole state because again the association it is a racket <laughs> it's for profit right so i mean hey i mean i'm not going to give you in miami if you want tampa you got to pay for that one but as long as you pay dues for that association your, your broker, your broker has to do that, right? Then you can get that MLS access. Well, it's about time they updated this thing, man. I mean, yes, they, I mean, that's the main issue, right? They got to, they, they've made enough money at this point. Like, <laughs> come on, give me, give me a new UI. This is garbage. Yeah. And, and that's, I think the issue is that, you know, it can cost a lot of money for dues. I mean, I was paying dues in Florida for three different MLSs, you know, I mean, just to get the access, right? And, Cause I was listing yeah. houses in, all over the state. And it becomes a lot of money. And I'm glad you, know, you said that. They, I got to pay mine. It's like seven hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean it's not cheap, right? So I mean they do need to come with the times because a new a new realtor can come into the game and pay so much in fees the first year, and if you're not there, you know, you're getting some deals, you might be negative in the hole. So um, they're making enough money. I mean, if you, if you really want to help your realtors out, then you need to you know give them a little bit more back. Is what the way I feel it. Uh, do you do deals in Puerto Rico? Yes, I do. Definitely. So if you got some, send them my way. I, uh, I'm working on a farm right now. 
personal home farm container home, which hopefully container home will be done by March. But I'm at the house right now on our land now that we bought. And so we're looking at more deals too. I'm brand new to learning about wholesaling. Where do you recommend I get a contract I can use for Alabama? Well, lucky for you, I am in Alabama, down in Orange Beach. Matter of fact, having a meetup this Friday, if you're in the area, uh, from six to nine here at our offices at the wharf. Uh, you can look up Baldwin Business Network if you want to find some more information on that. Uh, it's one of the things that I'm doing to help grow our awareness of our business here in the area. We probably will have about 25 to 30 people here on uh, on Friday night from 6 to 9 p.m. We'll have free food, some free beverages, beer, wine, Cokes, whatever you need. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're going to be talking about said, gold. I thought you said something else. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Coca-Cola. Brent, Brent, stop. <laughs> Coca-Colas. I said Cokes. <laughs> Southern in me. Everything's a Coke. What kind of Coke do you want? Um, I say pop? You're from Miami. That's you a different kind of Coke. South, right? You don't say pop What's in the that? South, do you? No, you no. What kind, of Coke, what kind of Coke you want? Oh, everything's just a Coke. Everything's a Coke. Yeah, everything's a Coke. Yep, everything's Coke. Yeah. And in Miami, it's, it means a totally different thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can I do the same like you guys, Florida and Puerto Rico? I'm not sure what you mean. You mean with ESP? So, yeah, I don't know yeah, how ESP I mean, is set up. You have to get your license in Puerto Rico to be able to do real estate in Puerto Rico. You're talking about for a realtor side. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if there's any. Uh, what you what you call it? What do they call it? It's reciprocity where you can reciprocity, go to the yes. state. Yeah, to the next day. <laughs> <laughs> we use that word twice today. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I don't Puerto Rico does not have reciprocity, but Puerto Rico is actually really easy to get your license. So you just take a test. There's not even any kind of like education requirement of like taking a sixty hours, you just go take the test. If you pass the test, you get your license. Um and Puerto yeah, Rico does have a, it does have a uh, association. There's not really an MLS, which is uh, there's no MLS. There's no like, Puerto Rico is like the Wild, Wild West. There is no like uh, shared data, so you can't go on Zillow. I mean, you can see some stuff on Zillow, but most of the stuff you can't see. It's like hey, you have to know the realtors and you know talk to the realtors. You know, I can't even pull like I can't use my batch leads in here and, and find <laughs> find houses. It's a little bit different. I'm trying to crack the code, but I haven't done it yet. Oh. But yeah, as far as the contract for Alabama, hit me up. I'll send you our contract, no problem. Um, <laughs> let's see here. We got some new comments. Rock says I'm in love with the cocoa. <laughs> Bacon soda. <clears throat> Definitely, guys. Bring some more questions in. Uh, you know, just so you guys know a little bit more about the uh you know our group we do have a weekly zoom on wednesday nights you know so today at 7 p.m eastern is that eastern Bread or central time i'm all messed up on time what time do we do that yeah you're all messed up yeah it's 6 p.m central 7 eastern and 8 atlantic 8 atlantic yeah so we do a weekly zoom and it's been uh you know really good stuff in there like you said i mean we, we share a lot of information about deals that people are doing we kind of help walk them through and it's usually about two hours on there sometimes it's a little bit longer yeah. but uh no, that's yeah, if you guys have any interest whatsoever in jumping into our uh, our mastermind group, again, I want to keep it to where you know you've done a, at least one deal. I want you, to, I want you to prove. And the reason behind this is, I want you to prove to yourself that you can do this. That's the reason I, I usually cut people off. It's like, now, granted, we've had a lot of people come in who's like, no, 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 I'm paying to get in now, and that's and if that's you, that's fine. I'm not going to stop you. But I want you to prove to yourself that you can do this business using the free resources that we, we provide and that you know, a bunch of other people provide because there's so much out there for free, just like these Q&As. Like, I want to help you get your first deal without you ever paying me a dime. Now, hopefully what will happen is you'll go get a deal or two or three, and then you go, I want to be a part of that group. I want to be on a call every Wednesday. I want to meet with it, with this group, you know, every twice a year in, in amazing places like Orange Beach and Puerto Rico and learn to grow and scale my business. That's when we want you in into this, this, uh, these calls. Uh, now granted, if you just like you I itching and saying, I gotta be in sure. Like let's schedule a call and we'll, we'll see if it's a good fit. I just want to make sure you're not too, too green 
uh, so we're not like slowing down everybody else's uh, <laughs> calls because I want to be I want to keep in mind the people that are in this group and not have conversations around stuff that's you know a little bit too too new. Definitely. Uh, let's see. Since I'm new to this. Tell me a little bit about your group. So yeah, like we were just talking about, we meet once a week, every Wednesday. We get on. It's usually about two hours, sometimes longer. Uh, we go through down the line, basically asking everybody what was their week like, what did they get accomplished, um, what do you need help with this week, what problems do you need help with, what work, what's working for you right now. Now, what we're planning on doing is once a month. You also get a bunch of other courses and uh, recordings, and like every coaching call has been that we've been doing for the last two and a half years is, is recorded and on there. You get full access to like a getting started course, full access to Facebook ads, and a bunch of it negotiating all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, so a lot of stuff that I don't really sell, or people ask me all the time if I have a course. Every now and then I'll do a challenge or something like that, but I don't really build out courses. And, put those out there just because those are time consuming to do um so i really need to be able to see what i'm thinking about doing the organic marketing methods of course if there's enough people that are interested in if i can get 100 people i'll do like a 90 percent off of what i eventually will charge for it but um uh, it's anyways it's a great group of people i know i'm doing a terrible job of selling it uh you can ask any of the members if it was worth their money and i'm, I'm almost 100 percent confident uh all of them will say Yes, I wouldn't. I would do it again. Now we have had a few people that jumped in and disappeared. That that I can never explain. Um, they literally paid for the course and never showed up for a call. <laughs> yeah, you get I, don't, that. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't get it, but that happens. You know, you ask anyone who does stuff, and there's people who do that. So, well, and it's not cheap, right? Like it's not cheap to jump into this program. Um, I don't want it to be cheap because it's not, it's not a cheap resource to, to do everything. I mean, this is my time that I give every single Wednesday night that my wife, I could be at home with my wife. Um, but it's a great, fantastic group of people who, who are all willing to, to jump in and help. And like I said, there's a lot of people in there doing some really big things, uh, that I'm really proud. And I'm going to be show, sharing a lot of that this year, uh, as they come down and we're going to be doing some podcasts and interviews with a lot of the students that are in there. Um, yeah, I think if you guys have any interest, again, more than happy to schedule a call and go through everything and show you what everything is and what it's not. Uh, do you have a website for real estate and PR? Also, can we wholesale, et cetera, like the mainland? Got it. So, yes, you can wholesale. I mean, you can, I mean, wholesaling is like the beginning of time. So, you can wholesale anywhere. I mean, that's just, you know, Period. That's direct to person, right? Peer to peer. So, you know, there's nowhere where you can't wholesale. Um, there's not, like, again, there's not a MLS per se. Um, and a lot of the stuff that you find houses are is on a local uh, Craigslist type uh, real estate, right? So there's a, it's called Classificados Online. And that's probably where you find most of the listings, real estate is on Classificados Online. If you go on Zillow, you'll see some stuff on Zillow, but you won't see most stuff on Zillow, you know? So, you gotta go to Classificados online. It's it's an old school website. It looks like <clears throat> looks like Craigslist. You know the, the UI is definitely not <laughs> not the greatest, but you can go on there and find listings. You know, also I mean, on you can go to HUD. So you can go to the HUD home store. There's a lot of HUD homes. Puerto Rico has a lot of government owned homes, so there's a lot of listings in the HUD home store. You can go on the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac sites to find stuff there too. But a lot of it in here, I mean, you gotta remember, we're uh, we're kind of still behind as far as a lot of the you know technology and stuff. So it's, it's it's a lot more like you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago where it's word of mouth, right? You got to get out there and talk to people, right? I mean, talk to the realtors in your local area, you know, talk to just normal people and see what's out there. So, you know, that's the best way to find property here. Um, or also, you can with realtors. The realtors have the information, so you can always talk to the realtors and they'll send you stuff. I'm struggling in the Mississippi market. What advice can you give me? Well, um, I need to know what you're struggling with. I'm more than happy to help you. Let me know what you're struggling with. And uh, I'll tell you what I, my opinion anyways, uh, hear what you're saying about prop stream and Zillow without the sold MLS comps, but wouldn't you say still say access to the sold MLS would be most accurate. Yes. Uh, yeah. that is hundred percent. The most having access to the sold MLS comps is going to be the most accurate information you can get. We're talking about investing. Yes, you want to be 
you know, fairly accurate, but nothing's a hundred percent, whether even if that house next door sold for $750,000, there's nothing that says that your house is that's the same exact house that literally could be refinished the same exact way is going to sell for $750,000. Right. We just don't know that for a hundred percent. If I can get it within, you know, have an idea of what the square footage is in that area, as far as what it's selling for a price per square foot, then I have a general idea without just roughly looking at it without ever having to even check a comp. Uh, I got pretty good about it in the Hattiesburg area. You can tell me what neighborhood it's in, how big it is. And I can be like, yeah, it's probably about a, you know, X mount. And I'll go look it up. I was usually within, you know, five to $10,000. So I always go conservative anyways. It, it might, I might, my numbers might show that it says it'll sell for 210, but I'm going to run my numbers on 200. Also too, just so we know, I mean, Zillow still has sole comps in it. Um, so I want to make sure that we clarify that. PropStream is not. Batch Leads still has sole comps. For, I don't know how long that's going to be. But Zillow still has sole comps. So what I was saying was go to Zillow and run your comps on Zillow because it has sole comps right now. And those are accurate, accurate comps. But, you know, one thing I do want to clarify is when you're comping a property, make sure you only use sole comps. Do not use pending comps. Do not use active listings because that doesn't mean anything, right? When, just, I don't think people realize this. When you see a pending comp somewhere pending, it's it, they market pending at the listing price, right? So let's say, you know, one, two, three Main Street. It says pending. And it'll say 150. That's the price it's listed for. That does not mean that it went on the contract for 150. They could accept the 125, right? So if you use a pending comp by the number you see there, you're not using an accurate number because it does not, they don't show you the actual sold price of the property is sold. So you definitely only want to use sold comps when uh, pulling comps. Now, you know, you can get a lot of information from active and pending, pending listings, right? If I'm out here trying to wholesale deals, one thing I do is I go and say, okay, what's the competition, right? So what are other as is properties going for on the market right now? What are they listed at, right? That gives you an idea of kind of where the market is. But you definitely want to use sole comps only when you're trying to figure out an ARV, uh, you know, a comp ARV value. So this is a good one. Oh, so I'm sorry. I skipped over Robert. How much is the course? I love this question. First and foremost, I want to, I want to make sure I, I clarify. <laughs> I mean, yes, you could call it kind of a course, but it's not really, you get a bunch of courses when you get access to the mastermind group, like you get access to a bunch of stuff that we've already recorded in the past, um, a bunch of uh, access to the, the coaching calls that we've recorded in the past and a just a bunch of stuff. Um, probably so much that it's like drinking from a fire hose. But this is one of my favorite questions. How much is the course? My response to that is it's expensive, but how much is a course or how much is a program that's helped several people, not just hit six figures, but hit six figures a month. How much would that be worth to you? And I don't think that any of those people that have been able to accomplish six figures in their business or six figures a month in their business are any more special or doing anything any more different than you can do. Cause they come from all walks of life, all different kinds of backgrounds. Uh, you've got some that come from corporate sales that are doing really well and they seem to just grab gravitate to it and, and nail it. You've got some people that barely finished high school. Um, and they're doing six figures a month. So you tell me, what is that worth to you? If I could, if I could say that if you go and apply yourself and you show up every single Wednesday and you actually do what we ask you to do, and you go and start landing deals and you start making, say you make 200,000 this year. How much is that worth to you? But the court, but the, the program is 7,500 bucks. And I was literally thinking on my drive, I, I listened to two books yesterday because I drove all the way to Hattiesburg from here to go check on a flip and then had a bunch of errands to run and then drove back. Uh, but I was literally thinking about how we need to kind of differentiate ourselves a little bit and how we need to create like more of like a beginner type program, course, resources, whatever. And then for the mastermind group, maybe split that off or something. Uh, but for now it's all one group and eventually that price is going to go up to 10 grand because we're actually meeting in person. There's a lot of expenses involved when it comes to food and uh, all that stuff. Coordination, having an event, event planner, basically handling a lot of the stuff. So, that will probably go up in the future, but yes, it's not cheap. 
seventy five hundred dollars is a lot of money. I know that. I spent spent that easily. I spent fifteen grand on my first mastermind. I spent twenty grand in another mastermind. Um, these are all things that I've earned all that money back and then some by being a part of those groups and being in those rooms with those people. That's where my network came from. If I had not have joined the masterminds that I joined and, and jumped into the programs that I've, I've been a part of, my network would not be nearly as strong as it is today. But I can call on people that I know is like, oh, I know last time I talked to uh, Jeff out in Arizona, like I had a question about land. He does land. I know I can call him because we've been in the same rooms at masterminds together. We met at uh, the carrot one, the carrot camp, which is well worth the money, by the way, if anyone's ever been interested in going and doing that a fantastic event, but even it's like, I think it's like 2,500 or three grand to go for the weekend, right? It's not cheap. However, it's paying to speed up your learning curve. You can go find all this information for free. I give it to you for free. George gives it to you for free. There's hundreds of other people that gives it to you for free. You can go find all this information yourself. Go read all the books, listen to all the podcasts, watch all the YouTube videos, all that for free. Everything out there you want to learn is for free. You can do it. However, if you want to join a network of people who are actively doing this every single day and want to help you get to where they are, then come have a conversation with us if you want to get serious. That's all. I, I feel like that was a better, uh, was a better, uh, Yes, sales pitch there <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh it's really is it's one of the best things i've ever done was, was building this group there's about 150 something of us in that group um we usually have about 13 to 14 people pop in every single wednesday and we just work out all their problems all their issues and we talk about what's winning what they're winning at right so they they're able to share what they're actively doing right now and how they just want to deal or what you know what they're actively doing that's it's making them money so people that are listening in can take some notes and go apply that themselves. So, um, this is a good one too. Is it best to go to a local real estate attorney and ask for a contract they would use live in Tennessee? So here's my opinion, Jory, I'd like to hear yours as well. Find a local investor that's already doing business there. See if they'll give you a copy of their contract. If not, then I probably wouldn't do business with them anyways. And then take that version of that contract. Or you can take the contract from the file section of the wholesale hackers group and take it and say, Hey, I need to make sure this is applicable for Tennessee. But not all attorneys are created equal. Make sure you go to a title company or a title attorney that's working with investors. Because most of them are just going to tell you, use the you know, Texas or the Tennessee real estate uh contract yeah as in, yeah i mean yeah every every attorney attorneys cpas remember they all are different right so, so what does that attorney specialize in what does that cpa specialize in right who's using the contract the most your local investors your local wholesalers you know so i would go to them first and the majority of them will share a contract with you right and if not you can ask us because i mean i use the same contract in every in every state i do deals in i use the same contract there's not a different contract for each state Right, I have a contract I've been using forever. We tweak it every once in a while, but you know, it's our contract. Like you would, right? Yeah, like you have to tweak it in like tax stamp states, right? So like in Mississippi, there's no yeah. tax stamp. South Carolina, there is a tax stamp. That's usually about the only thing that really changes. Yeah, or like over the years, we've added stuff as we learn new things, you know. Yeah. But the, if I send a seller a contract in Mississippi, it's the same one I want to send to Michigan or Pennsylvania, you know. So you know that's that's what i would say um just do that first and if you you know reach out to someone who you know is doing business and are reputable then i would you know you can use that contract and then if you find a good attorney who you feel comfortable with you know always you can always run it by them and say hey anything in this for my state that i should know you know because i don't know everything with Tennessee. um but you always want to reach out to people who are doing business first <clears throat> see what they have or you can do uh, Brett, yeah. and you can just ask your wife <laughs> yeah, I just asked my wife. Um, yeah, check out our contract. I mean, it's in the file section. You can use it. Um, you just want to make sure that it, you know. Oh, what I wanted to say, this is what I wanted to do. Go to Wholesale Hackers on YouTube. Type in Wholesale Hackers Contracts Episode 10. And you'll see there's a full hour 
where we went through um our, now there's been a few things that have been added and subtracted to that contract since then but you'll get the most up-to-date contract in the file section of the group and you'll also learn why those certain things are in there so go watch this an hour long you learn everything everything you need to know about contracts in this business all in like an hour so go check it out episode 10 wholesale hackers it's a great resource uh keep attracting renters instead of buyers even though i explicitly state i'm only looking for cash buyers where are you finding i'm not where are you advertising that you're getting renters instead of buyers so you're looking for cash buyers what market are you in there is several facebook groups in mississippi if this is the same person i don't know if it's the same person or not but there are several facebook groups and uh that is like there's mississippi wholesale deals and then there's like real estate investors of south mississippi there's all kinds of Facebook groups that you can go and join and actually find buyers in. Um, however, if you've got a deal and you can't find buyers, typically that means you don't have a deal. Well, you know what? This is an interesting statement. I mean, I don't know if it's a question or what it is, but. Um, I think I it's going to back to. Uh, struggling goes back. Market. Yeah, struggling in the Mississippi market. market. Yeah. I don't know if that's the yeah, same person okay. or not, but. I understand that. So I got a pretty interesting story, right? I'm, I'm, I'm selling a house. We're actually going to list it with the realtor. So it's one of the rehabs that we did that we're going to flip. And so I'm talking to the realtor who was recommended to me, you know, from a, a contractor. And, um, you know, she asked what we do. I go, you know, usually we sell our, all our homes owner financing, land contract, right? And it was funny what she said to me. She goes, this is a realtor, licensed realtor. She goes, why would you ever sell a house on land contract? I've always been taught to stay away from those. Why would you do that? This is a realtor saying this. This is when I say that realtors only know what they know. And so it was a good way for me to kind of explain what it was, right? And, uh, you know, tell her why I do it because I want, you know, residual income, cash flow, don't want to be a landlord, you know, stuff like that. But she said to me, you know, she goes, I get buyers all the time asking for land contracts. I just tell them to go find a house to rent. And I'm like, wow. So you're literally throwing away money, right? First of all, because you tell them to go rent. And she's not helping them find a house to rent where you, you know, you, you can get paid a commission for, for uh, leasing. You know, that's a big, big industry. There are people who only deal with leases with tenants and you get, you know, first month's uh, rent or security deposit, you get that. But the fact that she's just telling these, you know, potential buyers, renters might, they're not cash buyers, but these are potential buyers. And if you know, investors who do owner financing, renters are buyers. Okay. <laughs> like they're legitimate buyers. I mean, renters are buyers to me. Right. So she, first of all, she's throwing away this potential source of income. So I said, Hey, first of all, if you get any of these renters, you're calling them, you know, call us because that's who we work with. We'll turn them to buyers. Right. But it's because of what she knows. Right. She has been taught probably by her broker that a land contract, right. Or owner finance deal is trash. It's not worth her time. Okay. This is what a lot of realtors, a lot of realtors think this. It goes back to the whole, you know, realtors get mad at wholesalers, but realtors really don't want to do what wholesalers do. That most of them don't want to get nitty gritty dirty. They don't want to deal with the type of clients we deal with. They want to deal with the, the cookie cutter retail property seller or the cookie cutter conventionally approved buyer. Okay, so that's what realtors mostly mostly uh, focus on. And so wholesalers, creative finance investors, we're all very 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 much needed because there's more buyers out there than that little pool of just conventional buyers. You know, so after I talked to her for about ten minutes, you know, she kind of was like, "Wow, I mean, it makes total sense." Um, so it just goes into just trying to say that the skills that, you know, me and Brent talk about that you guys are learning, they are very, very, very much needed because renters can become buyers, right? She's telling these people who are looking for land contracts who want to buy a home to just go rent. At the end of the day, when they're renting, they're not getting any equity, right? They're not, they're not uh, getting any tax write-offs for interest deductions. I mean, there's a lot of benefits they're losing out of because they're just renting because even a local realtor is not bringing them potential property that they can buy. You know, so those renters don't just throw them away, right? Figure out the situation and go out there and find those. There's a creative finance investor in your market who probably will sell them a house on the financing. I agree. I agree. Well, it is actually nailed it. It's, it's one o'clock on the dot. It is <laughs> our hour is up, everybody. Um, we had a good crowd today. I love it. I know the. The group is growing. If you guys are in the wholesale hackers group, please share the love. Let let your people know that you know it's a great group. We 
doing these free live Q and A's, let everybody know, invite them to join in on there. We're at, we're, I think we're about 17 people away from having 9,000 members. So my goal is to be at 10,000 by the, uh, by the end of the first quarter. Um, this group has never really been about like large amounts of numbers. Matter of fact, I think we decline about 20% of the people that ask to join. If you don't answer the questions and you can't agree to the rules, see ya. But the group is about education only. Like there's never really any sales pitches in there. I don't want a bunch of deal posts that are clogging it up. Now I do want to do once a week, allow people to post their deals and then you and I can analyze them uh, on the Q and a. So it'll give us an opportunity to kind of look into what, what deals are out there what we like about it, what we don't like about it and so on and so forth. So stay tuned for those posts. I'm probably going to do them. I'm going to do them every Monday. And then, uh, that way it gives us time to pick a, pick one that we want to analyze. Maybe one, maybe both of us will pick one. Maybe you'll pick one and I'll pick one and we'll just go in on it and and give our opinions on it. Man, bro, this is a lot of Moreno's on today, man. You invited the whole family today. I know. Actually, (laughs) I got an uncle. I got an uncle named Pedro Moreno. So, yeah. <laughs> no, but I don't definitely, think he's buying houses. We would love to be able to help you guys break down some deals. You know, get get into the nitty gritty of stuff, man. So that's that. This is for again. I mean, we want to come on here and, and answer any any questions you have, from the most you know simple questions to the most complex and most difficult. So you know, make sure you guys keep joining. We appreciate the support. Keep spreading the word. So we can come in here and you know give you guys information you're looking to get. <clears throat> And expect a ton of content from me this year. So I've got, I've got, only thing I'm missing is I'm trying to find one piece that holds all my gear that I'm going to set up on one of these desks over here. Uh, I've already got about five or six different pieces of content that I have planned for uh, releasing here in the next couple of weeks. So as soon as I find that little, one little thing, I can get my setup back up and running. I'll have videos back out again, showing you guys what I'm doing. I'm, we're like month four here in this market and we're already on pace to hit $100,000 a month. So, I didn't know anyone here other than a handful of people. And I just came in and said, screw it. This is what we're doing. We're going to open a new office. We're going to invite people over. I'm going to uh, do a monthly meetup. You know, it may sound easy for somebody like, you know, you're like, oh, well, you can do it because you've been doing this for so long and you've got this huge following and all this other stuff. I don't have a following here in Baldwin County. No one, no, no one really knows who I am here. Maybe a, maybe a sprinkle of two you know, people here and there, but. I had to come here not knowing anybody and we'll have 30 to 40 people at our meetup this Friday night. We're going to have a great time. We're going to talk about goal setting where everybody's going to write their goals down and we're going to, we're going to have a good time doing that. Then we're going to have free food and just networking and, and meeting people, passing out business cards. How can we help you? How can that can, how can uh, we help you? How can you help us? All that stuff. So it's landing us some deals. Um, matter of fact, my deal in Hattiesburg was a referral deal uh, that we just closed on that we're starting to flip here this week. Um, this deal that came through that we're working on, hopefully closing on Friday, was not a referral, but it was completely organic. It was a foreclosure that we called on back in July and that we're still working on. So he called us back because I had such good rapport with him. But if that one lands, I'd be another six-figure deal if we can get that one done. So we are... We're, we're sitting pretty good, not to mention a big six figure flip that we've got going on. That should be done. Our windows should be in this week and going in finally. And then we can get this thing listed. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to stress too, guys. I mean, a lot of you guys looking for your first deal or, you know, we buy deals, you know, um, all over the place from people who come on our, on our uh, weekly Q and a, so, you know, we, we're buyers out there. So, I mean, find buyers, we talk to us, you know, send us the deals you got. I mean, a lot of people send us deals for information and for help, and then we end up buying them from them. You know, so that's that's an easy way for you guys to get some some deals going. Is go out there and find them and bring them to us. You know, that's that's the main thing that I've always wanted to do. You know, is not sell courses like Brent said. Not like we want to do deals with people. You know, because if I can help you spend that money on marketing and you know go out there and find some deals, and we do deals together. You know, that's what we want to do. So <clears throat> just want to make sure we got you know we stress that to you guys. All right, guys, that's it for us today. Thank you guys for tuning in. We had a great, great audience today. Um, we're only going to keep this thing growing and answering your questions every, every single week. We have a lot of fun doing these. So I appreciate you guys showing up. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place until then y'all go get some deals and let us know if we can help you post in the group, ask questions. We're here to help. See you later. <laughs> All right, guys.